Uh, hello students, uh, so welcome to this lecture uh, where we will be estimating the delay of an NAND gate. So till now we had seen only the inverter as a classic example and then um, uh, we had uh, you know we had used the transistor's current equation to arrive at the propagation delay falling uh, delay and then uh, at some point of time we had uh, you know uh, we had approximated that to an RC uh, network and then from the RC network we said it is log of 2 into RC. And finally, we uh, ignored the log of two expression, uh, stating that you know the input may not be always a step input. So there will be some kind of an input transition, and uh, to have it more a conservative approach, we said that uh, the delay, the falling delay or the rising delay, will be nothing but a product of R and C. In our last class, uh, we had seen an Elmore delay method, uh, and we had established uh, a, a kind of an expression uh, uh, involving the summation of the product of R and C. So that particular Elmore delay method we are trying we will apply into uh, into the NAND uh, gate especially we will look into the three input NAND gate and then see what is the uh, overall uh, the propagation delay falling and then the rising right so to understand that what we will do is uh, we'll quickly go over uh, uh, the inverter you know the invert the unit inverter uh, circuit uh, which is driving another unit inverter. Uh, quickly establish uh, that particular uh, uh, the propagation delay uh, in terms of R and C. So let me use my pointer, uh, let me draw that. So what we wanted to know was, uh, you know, if I have an inverter here, so a PMOS connected to an NMOS and it's a unit inverter. So that means that uh, uh, the size of this particular unit inverter is nothing but 2 is to 1, where K is uh, 2 for the PMOS and K is equal to 1 for the NMOS. Uh, right, so uh, so this is my input and then this is connected to another inverter of the same uh, size because it's of the second stage is also the unit inverter we have. Uh, so here is the PMOS, so bubble transistor will be nothing but PMOS and then this gets connected to the uh, next stage inverter. Again, the, the size is nothing but of the unit inverter, so 2 is to 1. So overall, what we see is, uh, you know, a capacitance here, the overall capacitance at this particular output node is uh, nothing but 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1, so 6C, all right, so this, uh, and then this one will contribute to 3C, and then the input side of this, and then this one will contribute towards the 3C. So overall capacitance is uh, 6C, and, uh, you know, if I look into, uh, uh, the switching resistance uh, of the PMOS side, which is uh, 2R by uh, 2 multiplied by 2. So this PMOS will always have, uh, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, this is uh, 2R divided by 2, right? So that will be nothing but R. And the switching resistance of this uh, NMOS will also be nothing but R. So I'm going to write it somewhere here. The switching resistance of the NMOS is nothing but R by 1, which is nothing but R. On the PMOS side, it is two times R because the mobility of the holes is uh, half, you know, that of the mobility of the electrons. So the resistance naturally will be higher too. Uh, and we have considered for the long channel model, it is two times R, the switching resistance. And because the scaling is, uh, the width is twice, so we had uh, used uh, uh, two, two R divided by two, that turns out to be R. Right, so and then here also the switching resistance, uh, nothing but 2R by 2 for the PMOS, which will be nothing but R, and then here the switching resistance is nothing but R, R by 1 will be nothing but R. So the overall, uh, you know, we want to find out the propagation delay uh, of this particular circuit. So the propagation delay, uh, whether it is rising or falling, uh, will be nothing but uh, this particular capacitance at the, at the, at the output of the first stage. Uh, 6 into C multiplied by the switching resistance, it will be either the PMOS or the NMOS, uh, you know, because if this particular node is rising, we will have the switching resistance incorporated uh, with that of the PMOS transistor. And if this particular output is falling, then we will have the switching resistance incorporated or included uh, with that of the uh, NMOS side. So it will be nothing but R plus, uh, and the output side, you know, if this is the output uh, and then this is the input, uh, right, so this output uh, based on the x, uh, uh, you know, as an input here. So this you know, second stage, if I'm considering the second stage output coming from the, uh, you know, input of for the second stage, it will be nothing but uh, the overall capacitance here will be uh, seen at the output node will be nothing but uh, 3C. 
because this is the two coming here and then this is the one coming here. So 3C capacitance multiplied by uh, one of the switching resistance, either it is a PMOS or NMOS. So I will get, uh, uh, so this one, uh, 3C into R. So overall, I'll get uh, 6RC plus uh, 3RC. All right. So finally, it will be 9RC. So this 6RC is kind of very interesting. What it means is, uh, if I have one inverter, if I have this particular uh, inverter, uh, first stage inverter cascaded to another stage, right? I will get at this particular output, I will get uh, the, the propagation delay falling or rising will be nothing but uh, 3RC plus 3RC. 3RC coming from, uh, you know, the, if I consider that, this particular component is nothing but 3RC plus 3RC. 3RC is coming from uh, its own stage capacitances and then the, the, the next 3RC is coming from the next stage, you know, the next stage input capacitance multiplied by its own switching resistance. Right, it's very interesting. So this 3C is actually coming from the next stage input capacitance, also called as a load capacitance, multiplied by its own switching resistance. All right, yeah, yeah. And here the 3C is actually coming from uh, its own capacitance and then this R is coming from its own switching resistance. All right, moving further. So what if, if I have a unit inverter driving M unit inverter? So I have, uh, you know, in the last slide, we had taken a unit inverter driving only single uh, unit inverter. Here it is driving M such unit inverter. So the propagation delay of the first stage, first stage means input to the output X here. So this particular path input to output uh, of the first stage will be nothing but 3CR coming from its own stage plus m times because there are m such inverters now uh, connected to this particular x node so there are m such inverters so each inverter is going to give a capacitance of 3c each inverter is going to give a capacitance of 3c so that is what i'm drawing here each inverter giving a capacitance of 3c each inverter is giving a capacitance of 3c so I will have M inverter. So that means that I'm going to have 3C multiplied by M times the capacitance that is loaded at the X node multiplied by the switching resistance of R for whether it is discharging or charging uh, based on the NMOS transistor or the PMOS transistor. So my propagation delay from V input to X turns out to be 3RC into 1 plus M. Okay. And uh, propagation delay uh, from input to Y output uh, will be nothing but uh, this particular component plus uh, in this particular output I will see a capacitance of only 3C right multiplied by its own uh, you know this particular stage uh, switching resistance of either PMOS or NMOS so it will be 3RC and uh, you know propagation delay from V input to X is nothing but 3RC into 1 plus M so plus 3RC right so if M is equal to 1 I will get uh, 6RC m is equal to 1, I'll get uh, 6rc plus 3rc uh, if m is equal to 1, right? So that is what we had calculated earlier in the last slide. But this is a more generic circuit where we have m such inverters. All right, hope this is clear. Moving ahead. So what if, if I have in the next stage, it is not only m inverters, it is not only, you know, and this is nothing but m inverters but also right the sizes are different now so what it means is uh, this m inverters are unit inverters right m number of unit inverters so this all the second stage circuits are nothing but m uh, unit inverters but there are m such numbers of unit inverters the first inverter the driver inverter has a scaling of 2w right so it is no longer a unit inverter it is now 2w on the pmos side and 2 1w on the nmos side so now that 2W is to 1W inverter, so 2W is to 1W inverter, is now driving M unit inverters. So M such 2 is to 1 inverter, right? So again, at this particular uh, X node, if I want to see the capacitances, you know, coming from this first stage, the capacitances will be nothing but 3W into C from its own uh, the first stage uh, uh, capacitances. 
Its switching resistance is nothing but 2R on the PMOS side divided by 2W. So it will be nothing but R by W. And on the NMOS side, it is nothing but uh, R by 1W. So it is nothing but R by W. Okay. The output of the first stage is connected to M such inverter. So the overall capacitance is seen at the output node coming from the second stage M such inverters will be nothing but 3C multiplied by M inverter. So M. Right. So the propagation delay from V input to X from V input to X, this particular node is given by, uh, you know, the R by W, the switching resistance now, uh, because of the two W uh, uh, PMOS and then one W NMOS transistor. So either of them will be switching uh, transistors multiplied by its own cap uh, parasitic capacitances, which is now three W C. So plus the 3C multiplied by M, which is the input capacitance coming from the second stage multiplied by its own uh, switching resistance of RW. Okay, so the overall propagation delay is nothing but uh, 3RC multiplied by, uh, so if I consider 3, uh, you know, this W and then this W will get cancelled out. Uh, so uh, 3RC is, I'm taking it as common, 1 plus uh, M by W, right? So this M by W is nothing but a fan out, right? M by W is nothing but the fan out. Uh, so the propagation delay from V input to X is nothing but 3RC into 1 plus uh, H, where H is nothing but the fan out. And this is the propagation delay of the one stage, the first stage, right? We have not included the propagation delay of the second stage. So it is only of the first stage. That means uh, a signal given at the input uh, and the signal uh, propagating to the X node. Uh, what is the propagation delay? Uh, so 1 plus H is nothing but the fan out. H is nothing but, you know, the fan out is actually, uh, you know, defined as the load capacitance. It's the ratio of the load capacitance with respect to the uh, input capacitance for that particular stage. Right. So if I'm looking into the first stage, which is nothing but the inverter, the load capacitance is nothing but uh, 3C into M. You like it is kind of loaded. So the input capacitance of the second stage is kind of getting loaded into the, uh, the first stage output. So that is the load capacitance 3C into M and uh, divided by its own uh, input capacitance. So the input side, you know, if I consider the, the capacitance here at the gate and then the capacitances here at the gate of the NMOS and PMOS transistor, it will be 1WC and then 2WC put together, both the input uh, tied together, right? So the gate of the PMOS of the first stage and then the gate of the NMOS of the first stage is tied together into the V input. So the V input C is an overall input gate capacitance, input capacitance of 3WC. So the ratio uh, you know, of the input capacitance is 3CW and then the load capacitance of the first stage is 3C into M. So that will be you know, the ratio of those two will be nothing but the fan out or the electrical effort, we also call it as an electrical effort, is nothing but MW, right? So the fan out definition is very simple. It is nothing but the ratio of the load capacitance with that of the input capacitance for that particular stage. And it is not how many number of wires I'm feeding in, all right? It is not the number of wires. I take it to the next circuit like this, right? This is my one wire. This is my one wire. This is my second wire. This is my third wire. This is my fourth wire. This is my fifth wire. So generally we get confused, you know, fan out is basically the number of wires that is fed into the, you know, the second state circuits. That is not the case. The fan out is purely a, a capacitive ratio definition. So the load capacitance, the ratio of the load capacitance with that of its own input capacitance, right? So that will be my fan out. Hope uh, this is clear to everyone. So let's, uh, you know, uh, uh, take an example here, if the switching resistance of uh, the PMOS or the NMOS, whatever I'm seeing is 10K, R value is 10K. So the R is nothing but the unit PMOS or unit NMOS uh, switching resistance, right? And uh, an individual C value is given, taken as 0.1 femtofarads. Uh, so that means the unit uh, NMOS capacitance, the drain uh, to body capacitance is considered as 1C, which is 0.1 femtofarads. Right, the fan out is four, fan out is four. So for the first stage, the fan out is four. So determine the propagation delay for the circuit shown in previous. So this propagation delay, uh, what we are considering is uh, for the first stage, right? It is only for the first stage and not for the second stage, okay? 
So for the first stage, uh, so the TPD is nothing but 3RC 1 plus H, right? Uh, so the fan out is anyways 4. Um, so that means uh, if the fan out is 4, right, if I go back to the previous circuit, the fan out is 4, right? So this, this particular value is nothing but 4. What it means is, uh, you know, M by W is nothing but 4, right? So if I have... Uh, you know, if I consider M or W to be actually one, right? And then M is equal to four, right? So I have four inverters. So one unit inverter driving four uh, inverters, unit inverters in for the next stage. So that's a basic example, what we have uh, in this particular uh, um, exercise, right? So three RC one plus H, uh, so turns out to be RC is equal to 10K multiplied by 0.1 femtofarads turns out to be almost one picoseconds multiplied by three, three picoseconds, one plus H is 515 picoseconds is what we will get, right? So uh, this kind of this uh, example or exercise is a very important example. So it is basically the fan out of four, right? So we, we call it as the fan out of four, right? The fan out of the four, so we also write it as fan out of four is nothing but 15 picoseconds, right? Which is nothing but a unit inverter driving four unit inverters, right? So four unit inverter driving a four unit inverters. And this becomes a very standardized values. So if I want to find out uh, what kind of, uh, you know, given a technology node, uh, there will be fan out of four circuits at the corners of the chip Right, so in the chip we will have uh, different circuits, but in the corners of a chip uh, we will always have this uh, fan out of four circuits to you know to ensure that you know whether my all my manufacturing process, all my uh, you know the design process, everything is if it is accurate, the fan out of four right will give me a specified value for a sixty five nanometer technology values uh, uh, sixty five nanometer technology node we will get this fan out as 15 picoseconds because the switching resistance is close to 10 kilo ohms. Uh, capacitance is close to uh, uh, 0.1 femtofarads. So the fan out of four should give me 15 picoseconds. So what it means is in a, in a, in a, in a, in a wafer, in a wafer design, if I have a lot of uh, circuits in this portion, at the corners, I will have this uh, FO4 circuits. Right, and if it gives me 15 picoseconds, you know, after the, the, the wafer or the chip is manufactured, and if it gives me 15 picoseconds, rest assured that all the processing, all the manufacturing processing, fabrication processing, the technological processing is accurate. So we can use this particular chip for, uh, for the intended applications, right? So that's where, you know, you will see in the, in the textbook or in the literature, the fan out of four is often used, right? Hope this is clear.